All right, this is going to be a mini lesson on sum of angles. You're going to be asked on many problems, what are the sum of the angles of this rectangle or this quadrilateral or this triangle? I'm going to show you what the answers to those are and why there's the correct answer. And so here we go. Let's first of all start off with quadrilaterals. Quadrilaterals, of course, are shapes with four sides. Any shape with four sides, an open shape, it's not concave. Uh, we can add up the sum of the angles and we're always going to get the same thing. Let's take a look at how we find that. Each of these angles is a right angle in this quadrilateral and most of you probably know that a right angle is equal to 90 degrees. So that's 90, that's 90, that's 90, and that's 90. If we do 90 times 4, or 90 plus 90 plus 90 plus 90, we get 360. So the sum of the angles of a quadrilateral is going to be 360 degrees. We put a little circle up there to represent the degrees. Now triangles are a little more complicated to explain. <clears throat> Here is a square, first of all, and we've drawn a line right down through the middle. We've taken the square and we've made it into two triangles. So let's first talk about the square. We know that the square has four right angles. Each corner of this square is a 90 degree angle. So we know that one's 90. We know this one's 90. We know that one's 90. But look what we've done to this 90 degree angle. We've taken a line and we've split it right down the middle. That means the part on this side and this side are each half of 90 degrees since we split it in the middle. So uh, to find that, we do 90 divided by 2, which is 45. So this angle is 45, and this angle right here is 45. So that means that the same thing happened up here. This line split these two, this one angle, excuse me, into two different angles that are each half of 90 degrees. So this one's 45, and that one's 45. So now let's find the sum of the angles in a triangle. Well, this side over here is a big triangle. It has one angle that's 90 degrees, one that's 45, and one that's 45 here. 90 plus 45 plus 45. I'm not going to waste your time adding that up a lot with you, but it comes out to be 180 degrees. So the sum of the angles of a triangle is 180. Let's take a look at another example down here. This rectangle has been split into two and made into two triangles. Is this still going to come out to be 180? Well, we know this one is equal to 90. But what about these two angles here? This angle right here, this angle right here. Well, look what's happened. We know that this one is equal to 90. And we know that this angle is equal to 90. And we've drawn a line that does not split it in half, but it makes an up, a, a, not a, a, this isn't acute, two acute angles, but we've got kind of a bigger angle here than we have here and kind of a bigger angle here than we have over here. But do you notice that this angle and this angle are pretty much the same? And this angle and this angle are pretty much the same. And they have to total up to be 90 degrees. So this angle and this angle together are going to make 90 degrees. Because look at this one and this one make 90. And this one is the same as this one. So that means this angle and this angle together make 90 degrees. This one might be 60, and that one might be 30. I don't know. I'm just kind of guessing. But whatever they are, together, they're going to make 90. And 90 and 90 makes 180. And basically what happens on any triangle, let me show you this with a, a moving triangle, OK? Here's a triangle. What happens is, as we move the triangle and some sides get longer, and others get shorter, the angles change, but it's always going to come out to be 180 degrees. All right, so let's first of all make kind of an equilateral triangle. Well, each of these angles is going to be about 60 degrees. 60 times 3 is 180. What happens when I take this triangle and I move it up like this? Look at the top angle. It's getting wider and wider and wider. But notice what's happening to the bottom two angles. They're getting more closed in and they're less than 60 degrees. So for every degree, here's my equilateral triangle, for every degree that that top angle is getting bigger, the bottom angles are getting smaller. So it's still going to be 180 degrees no matter how 
I draw that triangle. It could be out like this. Now the top angles are really small angle, but look at the two bottom angles. They're almost 90 degrees each. I mean, they're really wide open. And so no matter how I draw that triangle, it's always going to come out to be 180 degrees total for all the angles. So let's talk real quickly about how we would find a missing angle. Let's say we've got some, oops, got to switch this back over to the pan. Let's say we've got a quadrilateral. And it's shaped like this or something. And they tell you what some of the angles are worth. So this one, say, is 100, and this one over here is like 70, and then this one over here is 110, let's say. And they say, well, what is this missing angle? All you have to do is add up 100, 110, and 70, 0, 8, 280. So we know these three are 280, and the total of all four in a quadrilateral are 360. So you do 360 minus 280. We have to regroup here. 16 minus 8 is 8. And that missing angle down here would be equal to 80 degrees. Same thing is going to happen with a triangle. If they give you two angles of the triangle, let's say I told you that this top one here was equal to 100, and this one over here is equal to, uh, uh, let's say, 40. And they want you to find this missing angle right there. You just add 100 plus 40. That's 140. All three together in a triangle are 180. So you have to do 180 minus 40, and you get 40. So this missing angle in that triangle is equal to 40 degrees. That's how you do sum of angles.